that came, like P Valley, that hit me out of nowhere. Like I literally had like fifty dollars in my bank account. When that happened, that led to BMF. Then it led to me working with Megan Good and just all these people. And I'm just like, man, and I just most recently worked for Tyler Perry. And you need support. Yeah. You can do a lot by yourself, but you can get far with relationships. What's up, you guys? It's your girl, Bianca B. And welcome to the Bianca B Show, where we talk about business, finances, and friendships. So I'm super excited about today's guest. He is a really good friend of mine. He is the author. He is an entrepreneur. He is an actor. He works in production. You may have seen him on set of BMF, P Valley, and so many other shows. He is super multi-talented. He's also from the D, um, a really good friend of mine. Shout out to Devante. How are you? I'm good. How are you? How are you? Good. Hey, friend. How are you? What's popping? <laughs> I'm good, man. Just trying to take a break, you know, just, whoop. but you know how this goes. So it's just, you know. You just adjust, you roll with the punches and keep it moving. Exactly. So, you know, in this podcast, we talk about business, finances, and friendships. And I feel like those are three key components to this industry. Now, kind of talk to me a little bit. How did you know that you wanted to be in entertainment? I knew since I was young. I mean, I think everyone pretty much knows it when you're young. You just have that personality or you're just drawn to certain things. Um, when I started getting into different jobs, I just couldn't believe that, you know, like, how can people do this, like, year after year? It just never, I couldn't keep a job. I mean, I'm educated, got all of that hustle, but I just could not keep a job. I was just more so into creativity. Mm -hmm. And if I'm going to be tired doing something, it got to be something that I want to do. Yeah, exactly. And so you've been blessed. You're from Detroit. You moved to Atlanta. How was that process like? And how did you get into production? Because you worked on a lot of incredible productions. Like you worked for P Valley, BMF, and um, Tyler Perry Studios. Like you've been out there in Atlanta. So kind of talk to our viewers about that process and how you got into uh, being in production. Okay. Um, I think I learned adaptability early um, because... My mom was that girl, you know what I'm saying? So I was in the city, I was out the city, small town, suburbs, all the things, the hood, everything. So being in different environments kept my mind open. Mm -hmm. And when you work in this type of industry, you got to be flexible. If you're too rigid, you're not going to make it. Certain things you have to stand, um, I would say, strong on as far as your morals. Mm -hmm. But I initially started in acting, you know what I'm saying? Acting and music was my whole thing. But after audition and audition, audition, and everybody knows, you're going to get a lot of no's. So I had to think like, okay, do 10 years of here and no, or figure out another way inside. You feel what I'm saying? So um, just thinking outside the box, I did promo model and all this type of stuff. So, you know, most people are doing the same thing, trying to figure it out. And then um, there were some indie projects that I worked on for free unfortunately, but you know, you got to do sometimes just to get on your resume. Um, and then I was like, okay, I could do this. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, so when I got production, I was like, okay, there's long hours and there's a lot of work, but it's a double whammy because it's like, boom, I'm learning production. You feel what I'm saying? And I'm also around the actors. Mm -hmm. You feel what I'm saying? So I'm getting like free on the job training, but I'm kind of getting paid for it. So I mean, it, it pretty much worked out, really, you know. Um, a lot of the major shows that came, like P Valley, that hit me out of nowhere. Like I literally had like fifty dollars in my bank account. Yeah. It was crazy. You know what I'm saying? And then when it came, I remember sitting in my living room. I was like, Man, God, like I've been grinding, like, where is this money gonna come from? And I got a text message. I don't even know who it was from. It was just like, Oh, send your resume. I was like, Oh, okay. You know, that happens all the time, so you don't really think too much of it. And then um, they were like, okay, we'll send it to this email. And I was like, okay, still not, it's not hitting me. So then they were like, um, oh, well, someone so likes your resume, so just come in. I was like, okay, came in, you know, COVID, they had to take this COVID test, da 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 Of course, passed, da 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 And they're just like, oh, yeah, by the way, email. What? What happened? I said it was like, they said it was P Valley. Oh, wow. But I didn't know that. You feel mm -hmm. what I'm saying? So 
once that happened, I knew it changed. You know what I'm saying? That's when my life changed because I did a lot of background work with major yeah. stars and stuff like that. But when that happened, that led to BMF. Then that led to some stuff where Earl got even then led to stuff like I almost got to work with Lady Gaga, but they picked someone else and I was mad about that because I was ready for that one. Mm -hmm. But um, then it led to me working with Megan Good and just all these people. And I'm just like, man, and I just most recently worked for Tyler Perry and, you know, living in Atlanta. Right. I, Dream. You know, that's like the, okay, let's get there. Everybody was basically doing um, some type of work there, but I hadn't been there. So mm -hmm. when it happened, it's crazy because I literally wrote it. I said, by March of 2023, I'm going to get something at Tyler Perry. I didn't think about it. I didn't worry about it. It was in January. They hired me March 2nd. Wow. Incredible. Yeah. That's a blessing. So kind of talk about how it is as a production person so you sent out your resume and when you're on set kind of describe those hours for a, a viewer who wants to get in production and wants to get in film but don't really know where to start so like kind of walk us through that process and how it is with being on set let's start with p-valley for example okay mm -hmm. p-valley was very 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 fun mm -hmm. the hours were very long um in production, you might as well just plan your days at least 12. You know it's going to be 12. If it gets not earlier than that, like, that's, like, rare. Like, I, it really don't happen. Plan for 12 hours. But I would just leave the days open. Mm -hmm. Because you just don't know. It can go upwards to 12, 14, 16. I think the most I've been on set, like, maybe, like, 16 hours before. Okay. You know what I'm saying? So you got to have that stamina, um, energy good attitude it's always changing and you know whew, again it's just the, the mentality the strength yeah. you feel what I'm saying like you really gotta have it because it's not just the the get blitz and the glam and the camera it's really like hard work and you're yeah. like damn I remember the first time I started getting on bigger stuff I was like damn do I really want to do this like you know what I'm saying like because it's a lot it is it's a lot and then it changes every day. It's not like you come and say if you come in at 5 a.m., you think you're leaving at 5 p.m. You might not leave till 8 p.m. You might not leave till 9. Then the next day, you might come in at 10 a.m. You know what I'm saying? And you may leave at midnight. You don't know. So it's just like, be flexible. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? What I love about it, though, is that you're around so many different people. You know what I'm saying? Like, being around creatives all day, it's fun. It can be interesting. You know what I'm saying? But then you're networking. You want these people to be your friends. You feel what I'm saying? And not just to get something, but literally build friendships and build relationships because you need them. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, you really need them. Like, any industry, but this one, literally, you need to be very, very careful how you treat people. And I would say treat people with the utmost respect, even if they don't treat you with it, because everyone's always watching, and you'll never know who's watching until they see you. Or they say something about it. You know what I'm saying? And um, always stay busy. Even if there's nothing to do, find something to do. Got it. Because you always want to be that one that's in motion, ready to go. So, And so yeah. you, you're from Detroit like me. And, you know, you took the risk and bet on yourself to move out of Detroit. How was that experience like for you? Were there a lot of trials and tribulations? Was it a smooth ride for you? Kind of walk us through that as well. Michigan is called the murder man. You know what I'm saying? It's just, I have yet to see another place like it. It's very difficult. You know what I'm saying? Coming out of there, just the economy, the mentality, people. I think we are really real as a whole. But um, it wasn't easy because when I was leaving, there was a lot going on. And for some reason, God chose me. You know what I'm saying? I know you feel that way. I know a lot of people that moved away at young ages, like, was I doing the right thing? I'm not like, what was that voice? Yeah. You know what the voice was. And even when you go through your struggles, it always works out. So it's like, I just don't worry about nothing. You know what I'm saying? But it was definitely difficult. It wasn't easy. There were great moments. There were moments where I was curled up in the bed crying. Like, I don't even know how I'm going to do this. Yeah. People understand. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's wild. But 
and makes you stronger. You know what I'm saying? And if I didn't do it, I wouldn't have the success that I have, even though I want more. You know what I'm saying? But even the story you shared earlier about having fifty dollars in your bank account, praying to God and like, what am I going to do? How I'm going? I'm going to get through this. Where is more money money going to come from? And you know, on this podcast, we talk about finances, finances and production. You know, you risk your life. This is a life risk. Like, yeah. imagine if we had kids or a family. You know, the financial part is it's a lot. Especially when you're one person, you're single, you're on your own, you're trying to make it, you're trying to elevate in your career. And financially, you feel like, what am I going to do? You know, yeah. like, how am I going to survive? And it's a risk. So kind of talk to our listeners about, you know, the financial part of production. Okay. Well, everything is pretty much project and gig based. So it doesn't matter if you're a director, if you don't, it doesn't matter if you're just a regular PA or additional production assistant, if you guys don't know. Whatever you're doing, makeup, whatever, is literally project based gig. So you can make thousands of dollars. You know what I'm saying? And then you may not work for a couple months. You don't know. You know what I'm saying? So it's best to have multiple hustles. Thank God I got multiple hustles. Thank God money is good. You feel what I'm saying? But I remember them times. I remember them times coming home like, hoping there's nothing on the door. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm glad. <laughs> I'm telling you. But the faith, you know what I'm saying? The faith, you really got to have the faith because I think, I, what's the quote? It's that God doesn't give you a dream based on your budget. Repeat that. <laughs> God don't give you a dream based on your budget. Mm -hmm. Because if you have the budget already, what is the faith for? You don't need it because you already got it. You already know what you're about to do with it. But when you have a dream, nine times out of 10, it's going to be bigger than what you have at the time mm -hmm. until you start taking them steps and then you get blessings along the way. And once you start seeing them, put it together, all them blessings, you're like, oh, boom, you know what I'm saying? Then it works, but it's a process. So whatever you're asking for, you're literally asking for the process. Love that. And so let's go into the relation, relationship part of this podcast. You know, relationship building is so important. Networking is so important. What did you learn working on BMF? What did you learn from being on set, working with the 50%, 50 cent production? 50 don't play. You know, he's very thorough. He's very um, down to earth. Um, he wants the best with everything. You know what I'm saying? And I can tell because he held that standard, everybody on set follows through. You know what I mean? Um, it made me really see that you really got to keep your word. And I knew. You know what I'm saying? I carried myself that way anyway, but it felt like a match. It was like, okay, I like this one. You know what I'm saying? P Valley felt like a family. You know what I'm saying? Still very great. You know what I'm saying? But you know, every set is different. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, BMF. I met a lot of good people. I met a lot of good people, and I was surprised to see you know 50 be so down to earth. He was really cool. I remember one time, uh, he was on the phone. And he asked me to go get food. Um, and I was like, what? Like, me? Like, out of all people, you know what I'm saying? Like, all these people, like, his body girl was like, oh, yeah, I need you to go get some food. I was like, he was like, yeah, you. Okay. So that was dope, you know what I'm saying? Um, but, yeah, those relationships from Pew Valley led to BMF, and then the relationships from BMF led to other things, too. Yeah. So I say it gets smaller and smaller the more you work. Um Every once in a while, you make get another set and you'd be like, mm, I don't really know nobody. But yeah. once time goes on, you probably gonna know somebody in the grip department, hair and makeup, you know what I'm saying? Like the production office, you may know somebody. If you don't know them, you probably know their face. So keep in contact with those people too, you know what I'm saying? Because everybody is trying to make their dream happen, you know what I'm saying? So you need support. Yeah. You can do a lot by yourself, but you can get far with relationships. And let's talk about social media. I mean, that's how we met. We met through social media and we've been friends for that's, a while. So, that's so crazy, yeah. 
And so how does social media play a part in um, not only the production side and the acting side, but, you know, you are an author, you have your book, um, how does social media play a part and what, what do you want to leave on social media as far as a legacy? Yeah, social media is very important um, because people don't know you, right? I think we have a little bit less anonymity than we did years ago because people feel like they know you from what they see and what you post. So even though we know that's not always true, you control that. Yeah. So I say only put out what you really want to be remembered for because even if you erase it, someone can screenshot it if you don't like it. Somebody can screen record it now. You know what I'm saying? It's just, uh, it's tricky. Yeah. But for me, I personally try to be the same person in person that I am online. I think, especially in this industry, but the world now for real because of social media, um, everybody feels like they have to be something that they're not. Yep. And I think that contributes to a lot of the anxiety and depression today. Yep. Because everybody's trying to be something or you see something, you feel like this, and it's just like, no. Because even me working on these shows, I look at people like, I don't got 10,000 followers, I don't got that, but then I stopped and I'm like, I never really cared about that anyway. You know what I'm saying? If that happens, it happens. I just want the people that are watching me to really know who I am. Yep. You get what I'm saying? Because that means more when all this doesn't. Exactly. And then, you know, I, I, I had a moment last night where I had a comparison moment and I had to check myself and I was like, I was on the phone with my mom and she was like, Bianca, you lived an incredible life. What are you saying? Right. Um, right. And I'm like, I want this. I want that. I want this. I want that. And so what advice would you give to like millennials, Gen Z and the people after about the whole comparison and online type of situation, especially in the acting industry, because yeah. a lot of rejection and comparing yourself and I didn't look this way. I didn't look that way. What advice would you give to those people? I would say, take the time to know who you are. Mm -hmm. I think Jennifer Lewis said that. She said, when all this shit in the world goes crazy, know who you are. Yeah. Because, and when I say that, I don't mean be perfect. You know what I'm saying? You can't be like, it's like you just admitted, like, oh, I had a comparison moment. That's you being real with yourself. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Oh, I had a moment. Because a lot of people are afraid to really show who they are. Mm -hmm. We got to show the world okay. And it's just like, no, sometimes you ain't okay. Yep. And that's okay. But when you know who you are, you get through them things faster. Yep. Very you fast. Know? You do. And yep. then with acting, there's a lot of rejection. And it's easy to internalize it like, okay, it's something wrong with me. Yep. Maybe I'm not working hard enough. Maybe I don't look. You know what I'm saying? Maybe I don't have this or the body and all this stuff that's going on to that to each his own. You know what I'm saying? But fall in love with you. Amen. So when the no come, you love. Like, okay. Yeah. Don't take it personal because it's never personal. And that's the thing, the tricky part about being a creative person, an artist. You're very vulnerable and sensitive but you kind of got to be a warrior at the same time and know when to use it because a rejection, you got to think about it. This is a business. Yeah. You just didn't fit what they were looking for. It doesn't mean that you were ugly. It don't mean that you're too big, too small. You know what I'm saying? It's none of that. It's literally none of that. But you, you got to have that. So when it's no, it's like, oh, all right, next, go to take a trip or something. You know what I'm saying? Go do something you love to do because you have to have a life outside of this. And that's what I learned. Yep. When you're so, so, so this, 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 this. Busy, busy, busy. Work, work, work. Yes, you forget. It's like you forget about, sad to say sometimes you forget about the family. You know what I'm saying? You forget about friends. You forget about sleep. You forget about, oh, I'm going to take a trip. You don't even care anymore because it's just like I'm just so focused on this but then when you get to those points it's just like I got it but 
You know what I'm saying? But so now, um, after doing this for so long, now it's just like, okay, I'm back to balancing it out. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. So, you know, going into this year and ending the year off and, you know, your goals and dreams and aspirations and being yourself and being vulnerable and just progressing in your career, what legacy do you want to leave for people out there? Like, what legacy do you want people to know and remember Devante for? Love, freedom, and truth. Hmm. And I say that because when you really, really figure out what love is and not just loving yourself or loving another person, when you really understand what love is as a whole, you start to see it everywhere. You start to see it in you. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And then you only want to do things that resonate with that, doing what you love, being around people you love, giving love, showing love. I want people to really feel that and see that. And I feel like you can only truly love when you're in truth, truth with yourself, truth to other people, and then the freedom that comes from that. Those three things is what I've been thinking about for years. You know what I'm saying? And then when I start really seeing it like they all, and that's why I can't live without either of them. You know what I'm saying? But the root of it is the truth. Because sometimes you're not good. Sometimes you really are. You know what I'm saying? And not being afraid to... Be the different one. You know what I'm saying? Standing out. Seriously. Yes. Because that's another thing that makes you feel like, mm, maybe da, da, da. something's wrong. Because you don't find a lot of people like you. Yeah. But if you put that out there, your vibe will check your job. I believe that. So that's what I want people to really, really, you know, take from me and my legacy. Like, he always told the truth. He always was loving. And I was able to be free around him. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That's why I want to leave the world because how it is today, I just don't resonate with it, you know? So mm -hmm. you have to be the change you want to see instead of complaining about it. And so yeah. where can people follow you to stay up to date? At on Instagram, um, Devante Farrell, D E V A N T E F O R R E A L. All my links will be there. Um yeah. It's really that simple. <laughs> I love you, friend. Thank you so much for being on the podcast. It's your, I love you too. It's your girl, Bianca B. Make sure you guys follow me on Instagram at it's Bianca B at Bianca B Show. Thank you guys for tuning in.